In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a flexible sun tunnel into a roof. This is actually quite a good example to show you, as there is no access into the loft space to work, and the area is too small to work in anyway. It's also found by support timbers and truss work, which can be up to 50% of the times that you try to fit a sun tube. So, if you follow the basic steps in this video, fitting a sun tunnel where you can physically get at it will be even easier. Firstly, decide where the ideal location for your sun tunnel is from inside the property. Then using a tape measure, transfer these measurements outside and relay them onto the roof. Now knock up the roof tiles at the highest point of your install site. Then simply remove the tiles in that area so we can see or feel the roof rafters or roof trusses underneath. If you had x-ray specs, this is what you would see. Using a saw or multi-tool, as I am here, carefully cut the roof battens in the middle where they cross the roof trusses. If you're using a standard hand saw, this can be done by using just the top 3 inches or 75 millimeters of the saw. Once you have cut back the membrane or felt as pictured, this will allow you to reach inside and peel back any insulation that obscures the view of the ceiling underneath. At this point, just check to make sure that you can achieve the desired angle for your sun tube. You need to achieve the following path for the tube to be operating efficiently. A sun tube needs to reflect the light from the top to the bottom. This will not happen properly if you ignore this stage. Luckily, I have this ceiling light to help me navigate and it provides an ideal reference point from inside the kitchen below. The customer has asked me to remove this particular light and replace it with the new sun tube. So I just pop inside for disconnection. Once the electrics are safely dealt with by an electrician, we can get started. Here I'm installing a Velux flexible sun tunnel and these are the components you will find inside. I've named the big components to make life a bit easier. If you want, now you can remove the spring clip from the ceiling ring and put it in a safe place ready for use later on. I installed quite a few sun tunnels, so I've made a small plywood template the exact size of the hole required in the ceiling. In this case, it's 405mm for the internal ceiling ring. By laying the template on the ceiling in the desired location, we can see that this piece of timber is fouling and will need to be removed. Again, the multi-tool is a winner here. And if you have a wood and metal blade, you can simply cut through the wood and any hidden plasterboard nails that might be hiding underneath. This will save a lot of stress on the ceiling. Now with the timber removed, we can place the template in its exact location and draw around it with a pencil. I always drill some small holes from this side as a reference point so we can see them when we go back round the other side into the kitchen. Using the template and the drill holes, mark around with a pencil until you are left with a nice clean cutting mark. At this stage I always cut carefully with a manual plasterboard saw. Just in case there's a hidden wire or pipe that springs back and you can't see it. If it does, with a manual plasterboard saw, you'll be able to feel it easier than using a power tool. This could save you an expensive mistake. Hopefully, whilst cutting, most of the dust will rise into the loft, but always wear a mask when doing this. Now, if we go back outside or into the loft space, we can clean the dust off. And this is an important step, as later we will be bonding tape to the ceiling to stop dirt, dust and insects getting into the sun tunnel or the property. Try and make the ceiling above as dirt and dust free as possible. Hang the ceiling ring in place using the adjustable clamp arms built into the unit. Then just tighten it up onto the ceiling until it's secure. Now we need to check the position of the sun tunnel window from the outside. I always like to lift the external sun tube window onto the roof to check the angle of the tube and see how it fits between the rafters. As you can see, the angles look good, so now 
I'll check to see how the flashings fit in relation to the tiles. If it's possible, try to make sure any profiled tiles end up so that the flashings are covered by the tile and preferably finishing on the downward slope of the tiles profile, like this. It isn't essential, but sometimes by just compromising and moving the unit left or right slightly, it will make everything sit sweetly. When you're happy with the final position, mark the buttons with a pencil so that you can find the exact position again. Now it's time to make the framework support for the external window. Here it's a Velux, so I'm measuring off the top edge of the tiles 100mm or 4 inch as the instructions say. Once that timber is nailed into position, we set the top of the frame, which just happens to be where the top button is already positioned. Amazing. Next, the two side supports go in. Try to cut these so they're a nice tight push fit. This means any adjustment can be made with a few taps of the hammer and you don't have to hold them in place. Sometimes you're lucky and the roof trusses underneath are in the right position for the side framing and sometimes they're not, like this one. So all we do is screw into the side support timbers from the bottom and top. If you can't get in from the top, like here, a screw can be driven in at an angle, like this. Now I'm adding some additional side supports onto the truss and then screwing into it. This stage isn't really necessary but it makes for a better job. The frame is now complete. Its job is to support the external window unit and not foul the reflective tube. It's as simple as that. Next cut the membrane or felt above your top button at a slight angle to create a shallow slope. Then slip in the supplied metal gutter and fix it in place. Two of these metal gutters are provided and they interlock in case of a large span between trusses. Here though I only need to use the one. Now clip in the under sarking clips into the metal gutter to secure the membrane or felt into its position. Cut your membrane or felt like this and fold back the felt onto the new wooden framing. It can be nailed or stapled out of the way so we can reach inside to take the ceiling ring onto the plasterboard ceiling. Using this very malleable tape, cut usable sections off with scissors or a sharp knife. As you can see here, the ceiling ring is now fully stuck to the dust-free plasterboard ceiling. This should stop any dirt or insects making their way into the house at a later stage. Replace any insulation as necessary. If you have tiles with large profiles like these, it's a good idea to cut off the very tops of the tile where the flashings will sit later. This will stop the flashing kicking into the air, which can make the flashings leak on a moderate shallow pitch, not to mention it looks smarter as well. Now we're ready to receive the window unit, so let's go and prepare it. OK, so let's prepare the window unit. Fold the metal tabs into position. These are normally screwed into our framework from the inside of the loft after fitting, but we haven't got access or physical room to do that, but it doesn't stop you folding them into position anyway. Now turn your attention to the flexible tunnel. Don't forget to peel away the protective tape at this stage. Place the tunnel into position, making sure that it's seated correctly all the way around. Line up all the little tabs then rotate the tunnel until the tabs are secured and the locking tab is clicked into the locked position, like this. Using more of the malleable tape, thoroughly tape the tunnel to the underneath of the window unit. Again, this will stop dirt and insects getting inside the tube later. Now we can place the unit in position on the roof and on the marks that we made earlier. Simply screw into place with the fixings provided. You should now have a fixed external sun tube window with a sun tunnel dangling over your ceiling adapter ready for pulling through later on. Now measure your tiles and go and cut them as necessary. It may pay in some circumstances to trim off a section of the tile lug if it happens to be in the way of the flashing unit like this one is. Now cut the foam so it can exert a gentle pressure on the hole of the underneath of the first tile. 
Notice I've cut the foam to a special shape where the top of the tile sits. This is so it pokes up, proud, ready to kiss up to the underneath of the next tile that goes on. When one side is complete, repeat the process for the other side. Now set the triangular support bar height so that it supports the underneath of the top row of tiles like this. The foam may or may not have to be cut, here it's not required. Slide the tiles back into position to complete the tiling process. Gently tap down the very edge of the bottom window flashing. This will discourage insects and look neater. Right, there's the outside done, now for the good bit. Carefully pull your flexible tube into the room from underneath. Cut off any excess with some tin snips. Once you have pulled it reasonably taut, insert the metal spring clip back into its original position. You can now, by a process of releasing pressure on the spring clip and gentle pulling, tighten the tube and remove a lot of the wrinkles. Once you have the desired finish, fold the cut edge of the flexible tube back onto the spring clip and tape it into position with the reflective tape provided until it looks like this. Now fit the plastic diffuser into the ceiling ring and twist and lock into place. Next, slip on the decorative ring and it's complete. Now if you were to go outside and you're looking down the sun tube, it should now look like this. Now we've turned this into this. Here are fitted two flexible sun tubes using the exact same method just shown. To see a short film on sun tubes before and after conversions of both solid and flexible, click on the link provided here. It also comes with the best guesses as to achievable light levels. Well, once again that brings another project to an end. I hope this video has helped in some way and thanks for watching.